um, and I'm going to introduce you and then um, share my screen and then we can just go through this together. Um, so okay, Kate, sounds good. Kate Hilleman, um, LMSW, has worked in the field of environmental education, youth services, and public administration um, throughout the U.S. for over 20 years. Um, she's currently the Deputy Commissioner of Recreation for the Erie County Department of Parks. Um, she util utilizes a macro social work lens in her work to promote outdoor activity, improve public experience in the outdoors, and expand access to parks. Um, she lives in Hamburg with her husband, um, 10 year old son Orion, and Portuguese water dog Maya. Um, she likes to ski, snowshoe, hike, paddleboard, camp. Um, Kate is a former co worker of mine. I think I was thinking about it this morning. I think I've known you um, for 10 years now, about which I, oh. makes me makes me feel kind of old, but yeah, we, <laughs> we go way back. Um, all right, so I will um, share my screen. Bear with, bear with me now. All right, does that look okay? Yeah, that works. And I'm seeing the, you're seeing the right screen? Yeah, I don't know, you might want to minimize your menu on the right. Are you able to move that over so it's a little bit bigger? Yes. That awesome. Okay. Yeah. Just take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, thank you so much for the invitation today. Um, and, uh, you know, bearing with me on yeah, my technological adventures here. Um, my name is Kate Hilleman. I am the Deputy Commissioner of Recreation for Erie County Department of Parks, Recreation and Forestry. Um, I am very honored to have been invited. I am very passionate about macro social work. Um, I could talk about this all day long, so I will definitely try to stick within the time allotted. And um, I'm really pleased to see there's some students here. Um, I'm gonna have my contact information here at the end. So if anybody who is either seeing the recording or here today wants to follow up, have any other conversations, I'm really um, happy to give some, you know, have a conversation, give some feedback. Um, so, Mike, I'll just say next when we move forward, if that works for you. Yep. Okay, so we can go next, please. And I'm going to be kind of reading off my screen and kind of glancing back and forth. So, um, so just a little bit about my current position. I definitely have what I like to call the coolest position in Erie County and also um, probably one of the oddest social work positions. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit but later. So um, my focus really is people in parks and everything that that could possibly entail. So I just listed um, a kind of a, a smattering of things that I that I handle here at the Parks Department. Um, I should give a little bit of context that this is a relatively new position. This position was always in the budget, was for decades. Um, it was cut out of the budget probably 20-ish years ago when the Parks Department was really kind of decimated by budget cuts. And the position was refunded uh, four or five years ago. So I'm kind of the second person in it after some a very large gap of time. Um, so I say that just to, to give some context that I've, it, I'm sort of crafting it as I go. And this is kind of where we've landed after a little over a year of me being here. So anything having to do with public and community engagement and partnerships, user experience on all levels. So that could be anything from communications to trail maps, um, surveying. Um, individuals with different user abilities um, and needs in the parks, that all comes through me. Public relations and communications, so press releases, press conferences, announcements, um, all sorts of social media that all comes through me. Special events and programs and the permitting that goes along with that. The Ranger program is also under me as well. Um, environmental compliance program was just put under me, so that's um, a selection of grants that we've received to do uh, uh, habitat restoration and outreach in some of our Buffalo city of Buffalo parks. And, um, and that project or that uh, position rather is, is evolving as well into more community outreach grants and special projects, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And then anything having to do with accessibility and inclusion, I also handle as well. Next. So just a little overview about the department um, and a little map. Uh, just threw kind of some factoids up here. We're, we're celebrating our centennial this year. Commission for Erie County was founded in 1924, and then we started acquiring property the following year. Um, if you check out our, I really urge anybody 
uh, here and anybody interested in the outdoors to check out our website. It's very comprehensive. I put a map up there just to get a, an idea of where all of our parks are located. We we own a lot of parks that people don't even know are there, or we own parks people thought other people owned. Um, so we have over 10,000 acres of, of, of park and forest land in urban, suburban, and rural areas all throughout uh, Erie County. Um, so it's it's a pretty fun position to have on nice days. It's definitely within my purview to get out there and see what's going on in the parks, go for a hike, go for a bike ride. Um, so pretty cool in that way. Next. So a little bit, I don't want to um, go too far into my journey here, but a little bit about how I got here. Um, I started out when I graduated from my undergrad, I went to Bard College closer to New York City um, in what was called Community Regional and Environmental Studies, which was sort of like an intro to urban planning. Um, I It turns out I found out much later, I have been a social worker my entire life. I was a social worker all through college, but in the particular academic realm I was in, that just was not a pathway that I don't think a single person in four years of college mentioned social work ever, which is, you know, kind of speaks to why we should be lifting up macro social work practice in general. Um, so that that really was a focus on urban planning and sociology. That was kind of my focus there. I actually worked for New York City Parks after college. Um, so I've sort of come full circle 20 some years later. I pivoted into this adventurous world of tall ship sailing, um, which I won't get too much into other than that it led me into environmental education with youth. And um, when I moved to Buffalo, I started a nonprofit here and started to kind of realize I was a little bit more concerned about what was going on with the youth I was wor working with than necessarily about the environment itself. So that led me into the UB School Social Work Program. I was also a part-time student. Um, I, it took me five years to finish. I was working full-time. I had a baby halfway through, you know, kind of, you know, got my way through it. Um, Mike and I met at, at Say Yes 10 years ago, which you're right, that seems like a deck, you know, a year, a uh, lifetime ago, I should say. And that's where I got my introduction into child welfare, preventative work, which I found incredibly valuable and still do today. I started getting into more community social work at Westside Community Services. I then came into the county working for the Youth Bureau and then came over here to the Parks Department a little over a year ago. Next. So single most question, most common question I get when people see my uh, credentials is what is a social worker doing in the parks department, um, which is kind of could have even been the title of my presentation today. So, um, you know, Mike mentioned in my intro, uh, he used the term public health a lot, which I like, and um, that's probably the easiest way to translate this. Um, so I take a, a social work lens, obviously we know that term, um, or a public health approach to um, understanding the health benefits and the public health value of people being in the outdoors um, and, and also being able to articulate why parks are important for people, for different types of communities, for different types of people. Um, so using that lens allows me to articulate that really easily. User experience, um, I'm able to kind of put myself in other people's shoes. I use my foundational social work skills all the time when I'm thinking about um, a, a user, a hiker, a walker, a dog walker, a passionate recreation uh, user, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, but also even people, you know, people I work with, people, um, pe people that I supervise. Um, but certainly thinking about that user experience really sets me up well um, for all the public relations and outreach that I that I'm responsible for. And it's my social work lens that really allows me to do that well. Thinking about those priority groups, um, excuse me, just getting some text here. Um, thinking about um, you know groups who may have different types of needs or interests. So older adults, veterans, women, children, families, and under-resourced individuals who have access barriers. Um, having my social work background, my training, my education, my experience, again, allows me to think about what those user groups are concerned with what their barriers are, what their special interests are, um, so that I can really craft responses and implement solutions with that knowledge. 
And then supervision. I think this is true anywhere, but I think you know, my social work background makes me a good supervisor. Um, I'm, I'm proud of that, and I'm sure other people on this call would probably agree. Next. So I could not have this presentation without a Leslie Nope reference. Um, I, that's the other common thing I get. Oh, it's just like Parks and Rec. So if you've not seen Parks and Rec, I urge you to watch it. It's not exactly the same here, but um, you know, any bureaucracy is the same. I loved this meme when I found it. Um, this is very much how I feel about a lot of things that I deal with. Um, what I hear when I'm being yelled at by the general public in the parks are people caring loudly. And I, I kind of believe that. Um, sometimes we have to tell ourselves that, right? In lots of different contexts. Um, but when it comes to parks, especially when it comes to people with specific passions, um, this is very much true. And it's really no different than working with an advocacy group on, about any other issue. Um, most recently, I, 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 I doubt many people caught this, but I've been in a lot of hot water over um, some changes that we implemented at the golf courses. Um, I, you know, I, I find myself also thinking I'm dealing with golf. Like, what am I doing? But at the same time, I'm faced with big groups of extremely passionate individuals. Some of them are seniors, women, veterans. Again, those special interests, not special interests, those special groups with particular considerations and particular concerns. And I do, it does enable me to take a step back and think about, you know, why are you yelling at me with such passion? And how do, how do we find some common ground here? Um, so again, my social work background really helps me navigate that process really well. Next. So just some examples of how I'm applying social work in parks work. Um, these are just some things that I've sort of tackled and accomplished in just the last year or, or you know, things that I've, I've taken on. I wrote a couple of grants that are uh, bringing us some resources to build handicapped accessible natural surface trails. There are not very many of those in Erie County. Um, there aren't very many, you know, anywhere really. And a lot of times you'll see handicapped accessible trails that are um, have more of a hard surface, like a like a boardwalk or a pathway. Um, but there are specs for building natural surface handicapped accessible trails, and we were able to get some funding to implement those. So those will be rolled out in the next year or so. I coordinate a lot with the Office of People with Disabilities. Um, before I even got here, Parks had taken on a big um, accessibility initiative, trying to build accessible shelters. Um, accessible playgrounds that those have been kind of a big splash in the news. Um, we built five very expensive, beautiful, brand new accessible playgrounds with cord in place surfacing, and we're building three more as we speak. Um, so that's actually our new standard. We're not going to implement any new um, playground equipment unless it's fully accessible. Um, de developing public relations content, which is engaging, again, kind of meeting people where they're at, thinking about um, putting myself in other people's shoes and users' shoes. Connection to uh, resources for homeless individuals found living in the park. So um, this is um, not a new issue, um, but one that the staff here were, didn't really feel equipped to navigate at all. They didn't know who to reach out to. Um, so I've been able to, to use some of my contacts and, and, um, and very comfortably navigate that space, as we all do all the time. Um, and get some, even something as simple as just getting a phone number, um, just some faces and names that we can connect individuals to. And in some cases, we've even connected with um, the individuals living in the parks. We've connected with their caseworkers so that we have a direct, direct line of, of resource and, and connection there. Um, as you can imagine, our staff um, actually get to know individuals in the parks um, very, very well. And so they've really welcomed that kind of support. Um, changing some of our language, the way that we talk about our programming um, to make sure that it is inclusive of people with different abilities and different levels of access. Um, one thing I didn't put on here is that I'm also responsible for the Parks Adventure Bus, which is a partnership with the NFTA. Um, and that's intended to, well, the whole program actually, um, it's a bus that leaves the downtown bus station and brings individuals out to parks that don't have public transportation nearby. Um, so that's been a really neat accessibility and inclusion initiative. Again, not a parks initiative, but we are a huge part of it. And that's something that I've worked on as well. 
Um, we've expanded our relationship with senior services to offer senior hikes. Again, looking at some of the language and the um, accessibility and inclusion, uh, the way we design those hikes, making sure that we're offering something for all mobility levels. It's been really important. And just um, generally just having connections to the Department of Health, mental health, health equity, um, Commission on the Status of Women and others, um, just using just that sort of wider lens um, of approaching that sort of public health approach again, of getting people in the outdoors and why that's important. Next. So this is real, really the nitty gritty of what I feel like um, where I use my social work background. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big, as Mike said in my intro, I'm a big recreation user myself. Um, I'm really a true recreationalist. Um, I do a lot of different things. I'm not competitive in any of them. Uh, I just love being outside. I love engaging with the outdoors in lots of different ways. And so on a personal level, that's why this position is perfect for me. Um, but the social work piece has been critical in um, in navigating and helping these user groups um, understand where we're coming from and in, in implementing solutions for them. So the way that recreation works for Erie County Parks, again, because a lot, a lot of, a lot of, in large ways because of the budget cuts from decades ago. But we do a lot of these, we offer a lot of these recreation amenities through partnerships. So these are, you know, the mountain biking group, Wanimba, if you're familiar, um, the disc golf group, Niagara Regional Disc Golf, you know, all these associations and leagues and groups that um, that actually raise money and implement uh, recreation amenities inside our land. So it's my job to kind of, you know, facilitate those relationships, the contracts, uh, the maintenance, all of the pieces that go along with that. Um, and sometimes well, not sometimes, really all the time, these individuals come with a lot of passion. And that's amazing. It's really amazing to work with people that are so incredibly passionate about their sport and about their activity or their issue. Um, even dog parks, I didn't put it on here, but we've, you know, probably the most passionate people I work with are these people that are organizing to put dog parks in different locations. Again, it sounds like something so silly, but I mean, you know, when you're in a meeting with a group of people that are just, I mean, they are singular, singularly focused on that passion. Those are your social work skills that you're going to engage and use to, you know, you don't want to just be the no person. You just, you don't want to just be the bureaucrat that's going to say, okay, fill out this form. Um, if we can build a relationship and I can see where they're coming from, whether I care about dog parks or not, that will build on, that will create a successful process. Um, so I, that's, I use those skills constantly. Um, and especially when there's a problem, right? When we've got an issue with what a group is doing, a group's got a big issue with us, you know, we're the government. So a group's always got an issue with us. Navigating that process, um, is really to create a successful outcome. That's all my social work skills and engagement skills. So when I was thinking a little bit about which classes I use the most and where I feel like I'm use the most skills, it's probably my foundations work. You know, I think back to my, um, I'm completely blanking on the professor's names now, but I think back, I can remember specific classes where I learned certain skills that I just constantly use all the time because I'm engaging with groups of people and, and navigating the passion that they're bringing to the table. Um, so I just listed a couple of the, not a couple, there's quite a few groups actually that we work with all the time. Some of these we have formal partnerships with, and we have expectations that they maintain amenities, um, and some are a little bit more passive. Um, but again, also special considerations. We have indiv individuals with accessibility needs that come to us and, excuse me, and say, you know, I, I'm struggling with accessing this amenity or that amenity. Um, we are actually in a process right now of creating um, different price points for veterans to create. Um, or to access our golf courses. Um, so again, understanding you know, some of the background of, of why a veteran's rate, why a senior rate is important. Um, just having a little bit of context is really important for that. Again, homeless individuals I, I spoke about, um, children, youth programs. Um, so so um, just to sum it up, social work gives me the skills to validate the passions of users and partners, acknowledge their concerns in an authentic way, which again, because of my personal passions, um, it's easy for me to be authentic in this work and navigate the public administration process to implement solutions. 
Next. So I'm kind of flying through this. I'm looking at the time and it, um, I must be talking really fast. So I apologize, but um, again, I'm really happy we do have some students on this call. And um, so what I did is I kind of threw together, you know, if I if this were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, uh, what, you know, what what I would tell a group of students, what I what I'm glad I have now um, that I might tell a student in like a macro social work class um, and what I would encourage people interested in macro social work to ensure that they, you know, have on their punch list as they go through their career and their education. Um, so, um, you know, it might sound strange, but the micro, the clinical and the family social work stuff, the preventive work I did early in my career, I use that all the time. I, I just, it, it, it pops up as applicable in a lot of different contexts, even in the work I'm in now, um, particularly when I think about access for individuals that live in the city of Buffalo or live in under-resourced areas or even in rural areas. Um, I just am constantly drawing on that experience. So even if you're passionate, you know that you want to get into macro social work, um, having some kind of micro or meso level early on in your career, I would really encourage that. Um, gaining experience with municipal agencies on any level, um, you know, I, I always laugh because I, I fell into a little position a few years ago. I was the traffic safety coordinator for the town of Hamburg. So again, one of these positions where I was like, what am I doing? You know, I'm a social worker. What am I doing? I'm approving stop signs. You know, I'm, it, it just seemed very out of left field. And it turns out now in this position, and even in my prior work with Erie County, um, the skills I learned at that in that position, I'm not, I'm no longer in that position. It was sort of a part-time thing. Um, I use them all the time. <laughs> I wouldn't have really understood how municipal budgeting works. I wouldn't have understood how to write a re resolution, which is how everything happens in county government, in any level of government, it's resolutions through the legislative body. Um, so those, um, those skills, you know, sometimes you're going to find yourself, especially if you're looking at placements, kind of follow your heart. If something seems interesting to you, just go with it. I, I did my one of my field placements. I did um, in a, then Assemblyman Sean Ryan's office for a year. And again, I draw on those experiences all the time. But I distinctly remember, um, you know, my husband can tell you, I said multiple times, I do not know where this is taking me. <laughs> I was working as a preventive social worker at the time, doing a placement in a government office. Turns out it was all, the, it, those were all the right decisions. I draw on those experiences constantly and also those contacts constantly. I ended up uh, being successful getting some funding from the state because of my placements. Um, so I guess, you know, don't, don't count those experiences out, even if you're not sure where it's all taking you, because those little skills that you pick up, you got to store them away and you never know when you're going to use them. Learning how legislative processes work, similar to what I said about a municipal ex, uh, experience. Um, again, even if you're staying in a clinical in clinical work, or if you find yourself working in you know a meso level, um, understanding how funding gets is obtained, how it's transferred, allocated, how it's approved on the local level, is is just really really valuable. Um, and, you know, and that dovetails with advocacy work being tied sort of have your finger on the pulse of political um, changes, politi you know, how, how, with the legislation that's being enacted or, or passed. Keeping your finger on the pulse is really important, but it, but also just knowing the mechanism for how things work. You know, pay attention to the town or the, the county um, meeting schedules. You know, if there are public meetings, go to some of those meetings. Just um, Just kind of, you know, get a little bit of exposure to the mechanisms. Um, because it, it just, it's gonna inform your experience later on, uh, give you a much deeper insight into say, why things take so long in government, um, where your funding is, where it's coming from, why you may not get funding until the following year. Um, you just gain a lot of insight in just having a little bit of exposure to that. Um, yet one thing that I, I kind of marvel at all the time, I've been a writer my whole life since I was a kid, um, but um, learn how Right. You know, I I think 90% of what I do is is writing, is writing, even if it's emails, you could be writing a resolution, you could be writing a budget, 
You could be just writing justification for some policy decision. Um, get your writing skills down uh, really pat. Um, I, I'm always marveling that that's a skill that, um, that my entire career hinges on. So you really can't underestimate that. Learning how to write a budget or read a budget, um, navigate a budget, also a really important skill in macro work. Um, and I kind of touched on this, but use your time and field to explore a lot of different opportunities, especially if you're like, eh, I don't think this fits into this box. Well, then that might be a great thing to consider then. You really don't want to pigeonhole yourself, especially if you're still in school. Um, you know, if you if you know you want to do clinical, pick something on a different level. If you know you want to do macro, maybe look at something um, in the political realm or look at something on the mezzo level because it, will, it really will all inform your future experiences. Next. So these are just some positions that came to mind. Um, Mike had asked that I, I maybe touch on some uh, career paths or, or you know, other ideas where macro social work can be applied. Um, so I thought about some of the positions that I work with daily or that um, either I've had or that I've um, colleagues have had where a social work degree um, would be perfect, a perfect lens, perfect background. Um, so most elected officials um, have some kind of like a chief of staff, of course, but even like a special projects or a community engagement person, um, having a, a social work background is perfect. Um, those are the people in those offices that sometimes that oftentimes actually will meet with community groups or individuals in the community. Um, legislators of all types are very busy. They're back and forth, sometimes to Albany or Washington. Um, so their office staff will meet with those community groups and then relay the information back. So having a social work background is really helpful when you're face-to-face -face with community groups bringing concerns to that legislator. Um, any kind of foundation work, uh, an MSW, LMSW even, uh, would really be super valuable. Um, I've applied for some of these positions, interviewed for some of these types of positions. Um, the Health Foundation just has a new hire who's an MSW, who was at a, a local school uh, running an MSW program recently. Um, so program officer type work is, um, is really, uh, is a is very viable pathway for MSW, for macro work. Um, program development and planning at municipal offices, similar like Erie County has the Department of Environment and Planning. Obviously a lot of planners with planning degrees, um, but social work would be uh, right there with it um, in terms of looking at community development. In fact, within the Erie County Department of Environmental Plan Environment and Planning, they have an economic development wing. They have um, they do all the community cultural grants comes out of that office. So obviously having a finger on the pulse of all the different nonprofits and, and NGOs working in the community on different issues is huge. So social work background, macro social work background would be would be really valuable there. Um, one position I, I thought about is um, executive assistant to um, municipal uh, department or municipal leaders of different types. Similar to legislative staff, um, the executive assistants are often um, the first points of contact for, it could be other agents or other departments. Um, sometimes they're actually administering grants or doing the, the um, narratives for grants. Uh, they're facilitating a lot of information back and forth from the community to the decision maker. So that's a great point of contact to be if you have a social work background. And then, of course, a lot of leadership positions, executive director, chief operating officer at different types of health organizations. Um, as you saw, I was the executive director at Westside Community Services, which is a community based organization that serves from you know, youth into the seniors. Um, any kind of social work background, macro social work background. Uh, with a real community focus is, um, is great background for those leadership positions as well. And my last slide is just my contact information. Um, this is a picture of Bennett Beach, which is one of our beach parks. I urge you all to go this summer, it's beautiful. Um, but please feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. I'm happy to chat if you have questions about your own experience or decisions you're trying to make, or if you're just curious about anything I talked about, and I'm always happy to have a conversation. So that's it.
Uh, thank you, Kate. That was that was fantastic. I, I learned a lot. Um, it made me think of uh, so often I hear from people that, you know, um, the answer to a lot of the problems is to just have more social workers in different positions. So social work needs to be at the table in this <laughs> environment or at the table in that environment. So I'm I'm so happy to hear that you're at the table at something as important as as parks. And I've also I've also seen um, research uh, recently um, that tie a whole host of like social determinants of health and mental health and um, sort of just happiness directly to access to the outdoors and parks and and things like that. Um, I'm a I'm a park super user myself with having three uh, young kids and yeah. um, even something um, I don't know if you you do this but I uh, there's a rail trail near near me that I I run on and having mm -hmm. that so close to my house. Um, makes such a difference in terms of my quality of life. And it's such a small thing, but mm -hmm. it, it adds um, so much. So um, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have a number of questions, but I wanted to turn it over to the group before I ask some of mine. So any questions or comments for Kate? Priscilla, I'm looking at you, you're smiling. I can't see you. I can only see Mike, so I'll have to take take your word for it. Uh, Keith, I don't want to step in front of anyone uh, if others have comments or questions, but let me also echo my uh, or rather the sentiments of Mike and thanking you, Kate, for this uh, wonderful presentation. I I hope that you will uh, allow us to also uh, have access to your PowerPoint because uh, I'm sure that others would love to uh, really dive in more, if you will. Uh, based on the wonderful points that you made. I guess for me, in terms of everything that you've shared, my takeaway is that there is micro in the macro and macro in the micro. Uh, mm -hmm. And that really, when we think about social work in its totality, micro, meso, macro, it's the art of integrating it all. And you, in your presentation, really showed us how to integrate it in a way that makes sense and also build upon as you indicated those foundation courses so again micro in the macro macro in the micro if you can allow me to say that in, in the way that i did mm -hmm. absolutely and uh, that's a great way to sum it up i mean it, it and um it's just so important that on the student level you know, there's so many students that go in, I want to go to private practice. You know, that's what you hear all day long. And that's so valuable. But take that time in school to also go work for a politician. You know, you won't believe how much of that experience you'll use in your private practice and vice versa. Yeah. Those skills are so important because what you indicated is that your skills are the skills that you picked up and honed during the, your foundation years and, and intervention practice classes you're really using now in, in in a larger fashion right exactly yeah i also i also think you're sort of um trailblazing in a way and showing other people the value of a social work degree through your example um and then also um showing students just the different possibilities i really appreciated your um outlining your career path because it is non-traditional and it is you know totally you like you know you're following your passions and also what your um you know, good at. Um, so, so yeah, I think um, as a, a former macro student myself, I really struggled with, you know, I don't want to do clinical work, but I also want a job. So what am I going to do? Um, so I think right. providing some tangible sort of career paths is is really important for our, our students. So, yeah, I, I was I just going to uh, say, Kate, your presentation was lovely. And um resonated very close to home in my own career journey. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I would just say that um, I think it's such a valuable skill and I'm so glad that you placed emphasis on just that holistic nature of job experience because I think more and more, I think um, in regardless of what type of role um, social workers encompass, I think having that integrated approach is just really such a valuable skill and asset. and. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no one size fits all. Everybody's journey, I think, in one way, shape, or form is valuable, right, in their own career mm -hmm. trajectory. So thank you for those comments. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So any questions from the students or alum who are with us? 
I don't have a question, but I was trying to speak. I didn't think I unmuted it. I just wanted to thank you, Kate. It was very exciting learning about this. I'm all about wellness and self-care and through like anything that's outdoors and nature. It's definitely something that I would want to emphasize going forward in whatever it is that mm -hmm. I do in my future endeavors <laughs> career-wise. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I look forward to maybe connecting with you further. Absolutely. Anytime. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I know so many social workers and my, I myself am passionate about the outdoors and being outdoors. And it's so nice to be able to marry a career with social work and sort of advocating for more um, accessibility and outdoor opportunities. See, Emma joined us. Hi, nice to see you and your, your baby. Yep, nap time failed. That, <laughs> it's Emma. Emma Hi, and Kate. I were students together. Hi, to I was you. hoping you would join us. Well, yeah, Kate, you've always, been, you've always been such an inspiration to me. And I'm in this period of obviously taking care of this baby who doesn't want to nap, but also <laughs> wanting to uh, transition out of the micro world and head into a bigger, more macro field. So it's such a breath of fresh air to hear you and to just hear about all the things that you're doing. It's great to see you, Emma. Emma and I were students together and we used to dream about positions like mine <laughs> and yep. starting outdoor organizations together. And um, so, you know, it's great to see you. Yeah. Well, and I will say in Colorado, um, there's not as strong of a social work presence here. We don't have, I mean, we have social work schools in the city, but outside of the city, there is such a hole for social work and the deficits that you see within organizations is just unbelievable and I'm constantly like man this should be a role for social workers that's this should be a social worker doing this and definitely more social workers in the macro level would make huge mm -hmm. impacts mm -hmm. yeah I completely agree um just my ability to connect dots on on issues that have nothing to do with social work or the outdoors I mean just just those very basic social work skills that we take for granted as social workers. Um, I, I just, it saves the day sometimes and I can't, I, I can't overemphasize it enough. So yeah, any, again, I'm, I am very grateful for this opportunity and any opportunity to, to push social work more, I will be there or macro social work, I should say. Yeah, we'll get this um, captioned, uh, this video, um, and then I'll take your slides and we'll um, post that. So. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, um, I'm sure many other people will um, watch. Excellent. Any other questions from the folks who are here? I know a couple people put in the chat that they're at work and can't talk. Yeah, they go. yeah. I was just going to say thank you. And I'm so scatterbrained because I love this and I'm all over the place. And I, I, you have like the awesomest job. And I always like say, so I used to work for the Department of Agriculture when I was going to grad school for social work. And then like I got into the field and I was like, I would really love if I could do that job for two days a week and this job for a few days a week because I love it and <laughs> all of it and it's amazing. And then like through all of this, I was thinking too, like, I don't know if you saw, I think it was like a few days ago, like New York Times like put out this article about like the increase in um, like uh, clinical work being done in the parks and everything. And that that's like turning into a whole new like realm, I feel like too. And I was curious if you've seen any of that lately now, like they're talking about, you know, like clinicians are going out and doing like one-on-one, -on -one, like there's like hiking therapies and like they're doing small groups and stuff like outdoors. And I'm curious and excited to see like where that's going to go in the future, um, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I had not seen that article. I'll have to look it up. And I, I thank you for sharing that. I have an old friend who was trying to get into that. And I think she was a little before her time. Um, I think Emma knows who I'm referring to, but, um, yeah, that's really exciting. And, and I, I hope I see more of that because the therapeutic side of being outside can't be overstated. Well, and if I could put a plug into that, so Danielle, I actually started a nature-based PHP and IOP here at one of the local hospitals. Um, and we even got insurance to pay for the programming and we would take people out. We partnered with, um, Boulder County open space and use a lot of their resources to um, collaborate on the treatment. And it was an incredible um, program. 
as you guys know, social work is hard. And so definitely there's barriers and um, challenges that come with it. But the world of getting out into nature for treatment is big, especially, I mean, in Colorado it is. It's not necessarily social workers that are leading the front on it, but oh, there's so oh. many opportunities. And if you ever want to reach out, you're totally welcome to, Danielle, if you want to kind of pick someone's brain. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I would love that. That's great. Emma, I gotta ask, your baby is adorable. So will you share the name? <laughs> yeah, sure. This is Phoebe. She's three months old. Hey. I think she's in the period of going through some serious sleep regressions because yeah. she's growing and moving and shaking and does not want to sit still. She she just wanted Aww. to learn more about social work macro practice. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, she's like, Mom, we should move back to yeah. Bethlehem where all of our people are. <laughs> oh, great. She just wanted to meet me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, well, if there are no other questions, I can uh, bring us to a close. Um, Kate, again, uh, th thanks to you. Um, and um, I'm inspired. Um, I'm definitely with the sun out. I'm going to spend some time in probably some city parks today, but still. Um, yeah. Uh, so thank you so much um, for presenting today. I'll send you all the information once it's all up on our website and on YouTube, but um, this will live on in perpetuity. Um, so uh, thank you for everyone who is here. Um, feel free, I can I think I can speak for Kate, feel free to reach out to her. She gave her contact information mm -hmm. um, and good to see some new faces and um, hello again to some familiar faces. So uh, thank you all and have a good rest of your Thursday. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thank you all for joining. Nice to see you. Hey, Michael, I wasn't able to catch the contact information in the slideshow because I was on my phone. Is there any way you can email? Sure. To yeah. Us? Thank you. Yeah. You yeah, can put it in the, in the chat too if you want. Yeah. Do you want to just tell me your email, Kate? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's my full name. So, yeah, it's Catherine with a K, K A T H E R I N E dot Hilleman at eerie.gov. Yep. And what, and, uh, I'm sorry, do you need that again, Danielle? You, you got it? Okay, great. Uh, and Kate, just one more time, you said it is okay for us to uh, have access to your PowerPoint, right? Yes, that's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Take care. Thank you all. Have a great day.